Hi all the students. Today we are going to study another data link layer elementary protocol that is the simplex stop and wait protocol. In our previous video we have started the unrestricted simplex protocol of the data link layer. Today we are going to study the second protocol which is the simplex stop and wait protocol also known as stop and wait protocol. This protocol drops the most unrealistic restriction which is used in the unrealistic simplex protocol. And what restriction is that? The ability of the network layer to process incoming data infinitely quickly or the presence in the receiving data link layer of an infinite amount of buffer space in which to store all incoming frames while they are waiting for their respective turns. So the uh, most unrealistic restriction or the situation which was assumed in case of a simplex unrestricted uh, offer of an unrestricted simplex protocol was that we were assuming that the receiving network layer was capable of processing the incoming data very quickly, right? And we were also assuming the presence of an uh, infinite amount of buffer space in the data link layer again at the receiver's side. So it drops this unrealistic situation or restriction. So it says that we do not assume that the network layer that is the receiving one would be able to process the incoming data frames very quickly or infinitely quickly. Also it says that we do not assume that the receiving data link layer has an infinite buffer space. There is always a limited buffer space. So we will not assume that the receiving data link layer has an infinite buffer space, right? So these two assumptions have been dropped off in this particular protocol, which is your stop and wait protocol. The communication channel but is still assumed to be error free. So we are continuing with the same assumption that we made in the unrestricted simplex protocol here also. So the stop and wait protocol also assumes that the communication channel is error free and the data traffic is also simplex. That is the data traffic is also in one direction only here also just like in the unrestricted simplex protocol. If you remember the data traffic in the unrestricted simplex protocol was in one direction only that it was simplex and the communication channel was also assumed to be error free. So we are continuing with these same two things here also in the stop and wait protocol that we assume that the communication channel is still error free and the data traffic is still in one direction only. That means at any given point of time the receiver can only receive data and the sender can only send data. Now the main problem is that we have to deal here with how to prevent the sender from flooding the receiver with data transfer that the receiver is able to process which is known as flow control. Now since we are assuming that the receiving network layer is not capable of infinitely quickly processing the incoming frames nor is the receiving data link layer having an infinite buffer. That means there is, a, uh, there is a limited buffer capacity. Also, the processing speed of the receiving network layer is limited, right? So that means you have to send the frames or the data packets at a certain rate at which they can be processed by the network layer. And you need to think about the buffer space also of the receiving data layer. So accordingly you will send the data frames so that those frames can be accommodated in the receiving data link layers buffer space, right? So you have to keep these two things in mind while sending the data to the receiver. Unlike in the unrestricted simplex protocol wherein the, the uh, sender just kept on pumping out the data packets without thinking about the processing capability or the buffer space of the receiving 
network layer and the receiving data link layer respectively but here we have to think of that because we have dropped off the assumption that the network layer has a infinite quick processing capability also we have dropped off the assumption that there is an infinite buffer space with the da receiving data link layer so now with a restricted buffer space and a limited processing uh, cap uh, capability of the receiving uh, net uh, data link layer in the network layer we have to keep in mind that we have to send the data packets at a certain rate so that the receiving layer is not swamped right and this particular phenomena that is dealing with how to prevent the sender from flooding the receiver with the data packets so that the receiver is able to process them is known as flow control so this is yet another feature of the data link layer it takes care of the flow control a more general solution to this problem is that you have the receiver provide feedback to the sender so the sender knows that the packet which it had transmitted has been received by the receiver now there should be some mechanism so that before sending a new data packet the sender actually knows whether the previous one has been received or not so this mechanism involves sending an acknowledgement by the receiver to the sender so that the sender knows that the previous data packet has been received successfully and now the receiver is ready to receive the next data packet or data frame this is a general solution to prevent flooding after having passed a packet to its network layer the receiver sends a dummy frame which is also known as the acknowledgement frame back to the sender which in effect gives the sender permission to transmit the next frame so when the receiving data link layer has successfully received the data frame and it has passed it on to the network layer above it then the receiving data link layer is in a state to again receive a new data frame so that means once the data link layer has passed on the frame to the network layer then it sends an acknowledgement to the sending layer that yes my task has been done and now i am ready to receive yet another frame after having sent a frame the sender is required by the protocol to wait for the time until the acknowledgement frame arrives so there is a certain amount of time for which the sender has to wait until the acknowledgement frame arrives at the sender so once the sender has sent the frame as per the protocol the sender will wait for a certain amount of time and within that time if it receives the acknowledgement frame that then it assumes that it can now send a new frame to the data link layer of the receiver side so using feedback from the receiver to let the sender know when it may send more data is an example of flow control so this is one method by which you can provide flow control that is using the feedback mechanism from the receiver now the protocols in which the sender sends one frame and then waits for an acknowledgement from the receiver before proceeding are called the stop and wait protocols because the sender is sending one frame then it stops and then it waits for an acknowledgement from the receiver and then when it gets an acknowledgement then it sends a new frame again it stops waits for the acknowledgement so this particular method in which the sender sends the frame waits for an acknowledgement are known as the stop and wait protocol and this is what we are doing in this protocol hence this protocol is also known as the stop and wait protocol or the simplex stop and wait protocol